Yo, 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 what's up, family? Before we start the video, please give a like, subscribe, and share any and everyone that you can. Just read out there a little bit more. With that being said, let's get right to the video. The Boston Celtics just played the first preseason game of the new season and beat the Denver Nuggets 107 103. There were some good performances from our guys, and I picked five players to highlight for this video. So let's get into the film. All right, how y'all doing? I hope y'all doing good. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not, make sure you take your shoes off before you come to the house. And it's so good to have Celtics basketball back, man. I've been fiending for so long, trying to come up with stuff to bring y'all. But now we can get back to the regularly scheduled film session. So here, Luke Cornett, the first guy we're going to look at. He has 6 points, 11 rebounds, 3 assists. Should have had a lot more assists. And we're going to see even some potential assists. And this, to be honest, might be Luke's greatest quality, especially on the Celtics. It's his passing, his ability for the Celtics to be comfortable to just play through him on those short rolls or him just uh, initiating offers at the top of the key, those dribble handoffs, the zoom actions, the, the screen and everything. Like they're just super comfortable and the offense flows when Luke Cornette is on the floor. So here we got the initial screen and roll with uh, JB and Derek White. I like these types of screens where Luke just comes out of nowhere and he hurries up and set the screen even before Tatum has it. He's already running to set the screen and it just makes a defender like Nikola Jokic who isn't the quickest guy. It just forces him to really, you know, rush and move his feet. So here again, we have the initial pick and roll, right? And Luke is not, a, well, I can't say he's not a threat from three because Luke used to be an actual stretch big. Like that was the thing that he did. He doesn't shoot them anymore. I don't know why. I guess that's just a thing that the Celtics asked him not to do. I don't know. But for this sake, for the last couple of years, he has not been a threat from three. So Nicole Jokic understands that him being in the corner of the three point line doesn't really affect him, right? But with this initial pick and roll, you got JB coming right to Nicole Jokic. So now he's like taking some steps in, or he's at least focusing on Jalen Brown. You see, he takes a little, a little flinch there to, to Jalen Brown. As that's happening, before even Tatum. Before Tatum even touches the basketball, Luke is running to set this screen. You see how fast Nikola Jokic has to come over there because he sees that he's two steps or a couple steps behind Luke Cornett as he's running to set this screen. He comes out, shows, but Luke Cornett now is in short roll area right now, and he can make these passes all day. The Celtics are going to get wide open shots when Luke Cornett is in these situations, and here that's what happens, but Drew just misses the shot. All right, so here we have Luke Cornett in another pattern situation that he just handles with so much ease it actually looked like he was expecting some blind pig action here so blind pig is when there's a defender denying the the intended receiver so here Derek white passes jason tatum if porter jr was like really up on tatum and Derek white couldn't get this pass here he would just pass it to luke cornett pass it under the person that's denying him and then he would catch it and this and tatum will come over here for a handoff under the person that's a uh, deny so again blind pig is just when denying you can't get the ball here so he passed to luke tatum goes under that as a handoff it looked like luke was preparing to catch the ball here but tatum gets it he comes over for the screen he slips this screen very quickly cornet also does a nice job of just falling right into space like again he's not a guy that's shooting the, the ball but he knows how to space the floor. And the Celtics do a great job of putting him in places where he's probably not going to shoot, but they always have a plan for him in those spaces. So it's him getting that blind pick action, or it's him, you know, coming to set the screen. As soon as X player catches it, he's running and he's screening. He's slipping into space. They get the Drew, get it right into Cornette, and he knows what to do as soon as he passes the ball. It's out to Derek White. Could have been the hockey assist here, but Jaden Brown just missed the corner three. All right, so here we got Cornette in another passing situation. This isn't a short roll. This is him initiating at the top of the key. Looked like they wanted to go Spain PNR here. Looked like Luke was going to set this ball screen and Sam was going to come over to set the back screen on Dario Sarge. But he just gets the ball. Sam sets the flare screen for Payton Pritchard, who was amazing in this game. Somebody will be talking about, um, of course, later. And Luke Cornette gets his first assist. Then we come down. So the Celtics, of course, the Celtics uh, defensive scheme, they do a lot, right? <laughs> They do a lot. It's a very complex scheme. And there is somebody that they deem to be a non-shooter, which they think Russell Westbrook is, which I would agree with. He was hot in this game. I think he hit about three or four threes. But the point is when they see somebody that's like a non-threat, especially a guard, especially someone that is going to be handling the basketball, they will put unconventional matchups on that guy. So Russell Westbrook was being guarded by our center's a lot of the times if it was Tillman if it was Cornette those were the guys that were guarding him instead of like a Peyton Pritchard or Jane Springer 
Of course, those guys got switched on to Russell Westbrook, but the Celtics wanted length and size on Russell Westbrook to take away his drive because his drive does so much. He had eight assists in this game, I believe, and a lot of those is him driving and creating plays. So here, Lou Cornette does a nice job of knowing the scouting report, seeing Russell Westbrook coming downhill. He sees the screen by who's that? That is, is that Contra? I don't, that's either Tyson or, or uh, Hunter Tyson or uh, Concar, but he does a nice job going under the screen, beating Westbrook at the rim and forces a miss. All right, so here we got Luke Cornette initiating the offense once more, and it looked like they were gonna go to the Zoom or Chicago action with the off ball set by Payne Pritchard and the dribble handoff by Luke Cornette, but he just ends up slipping in a, in a Zoom or Chicago action. The off ball defender has to go through two screens, which is, this uh, off ball screen and then the uh, the uh, dribble handoff screen, but I mean it's it could be you know what I'm saying. But Luke just ends up uh, again doing a nice job of just falling in the space. Sometimes it's like the defense doesn't even notice he's on the court. He just does a nice job of slipping and falling into open space. And here he again he's wide open. Jalen Brown finds a miss. He makes an incredible. Wait, did that hit the rim? Okay, so this is a missile by Jalen Brown. This is an absolute rocket because he has to get the ball. Over Nikola Jokic, who, despite what you think about him as a defender, has tremendous hands both sides of the court. So he might have got a piece of it or almost gets his hand. Certainly impact in the past, but this hits the rim and Luke just. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Does Luke got glue in his hand? Hold on. It hit the rim and he just snags it. Okay, Luke, what a great a great catch by Luke Cornet, and he finishes with the left hand. And again, Luke Cornet initiating small office at the top of the key, gets the hand off of Payne Pritchard, and again, slips right into open space. Just does a nice job of getting into open space, forcing the defense to collapse on him, and not even, look, the quick decision making. The quick decision, this is his best skill on this team, is his ability to make plays in the short roll, initiate an offense, anything. He is a very quick reader when it comes to making those reads out, spraying out to the, uh, spraying out to shooter, sorry, and, and and cutters before he even lands on the ground. He knows where he's going with the ball. He knows that since Hunter Tyson is right here, he knows that hey, Jada Springer's open, right? Before he even touches the ground, he sprays the Springer. He just misses. Next, of course, is Peyton Pritchard, who had a game high 21 points, six assists, four rebounds. He was six for 13 from the field, and 12 of those shots were threes. So he was six for 12 from three, shot 50% from behind the arc, and he just looks like he never stopped playing basketball. This is a guy that just loves to play the game of basketball. Here, Jordan Walsh, a guy who, of course, we will be talking about later, initiated a lot of, a lot of offense today for the Celtics. Another thing that Luke Cornett does a great job of is screening, right? Here, the wide pin down for Sam Hauser. A good pass by Jordan Walsh, Sam Hauser gets to the paint, and then you got an off-ball screen, a good one by Jordan Walsh on Russell Westbrook, freeing the space for Peyton Bridge to get the shot off and knocks it down from deep. And here after rebound and transition, we got uh, Peyton Pritchard just coming up here and the Celtics upholding the spacing, making sure that Jalen Brown's in the corner, he's coming to the wing, nice pass by Tatum, just easy step in three by Pritchard. All right, so here we got another uh, dribble handoff with Luke and Peyton Pritchard, he's gonna probe, Probe, step back, and then he's gonna drive, try to draw some defenders in, kicks it out, and then the relocation, upholding the spacing quota. We know that spacing is really important in this offense, especially to Joe Missoula. Right here, he gets it to Derek White, Jason Tatum, then drives, drip, uh, driving right into MPJ. Pritchard relocates, gets a wide open three. All right, so here we got Pritchard making plays on both sides of the floor. Got the post up with Russell Westbrook, but Pritchard is a feisty defender, even though he's small, he's never gonna give up, he's gonna be pesky and he's going to get the strip steal right here on Russell Westbrook. Gonna come down, we're gonna get a screen and roll from him and the Mia's Kata. He snakes the screen, forcing Russell Westbrook to get in jail a little bit. Russell reaches, don't know if it was successful. Peyton Pritchard is stumbling, but he still he has the awareness and he has the feel on the court to drop it off to Tanimi for the layup. And some more pesky defense at the end of the shot clock by preseason P right here against Trey Alexander, cutting him off, cutting him off, getting a nice, not in a legal reach, but getting low into Trey Alexander's uh, pocket and trying to steal that ball, but still getting back and able to contest towards a tough shot. Again, Peyton Pritchard is small, but he is not a liability. Again, when you have somebody taller than that, you just rise up on him. That's that's cool, right? That's just. But he's always gonna be pesky every single time he's on the floor. He's gonna give you everything he has. He's gonna be pesky on the defense side of the ball. He knows how to side his feet. Trey Alexander to the spot, jumping right there. Was a little bit of a push off, which is totally fine right here. 
then he gets to the spot again beats the spot makes him turn again and pours a tough shot all right, so here we got more buzzer beater P. We've seen it all in the playoffs. Him hitting in the half court, full court shots at the buzzer, and it just gave us so much momentum. And this, he is a specialist at this. Like, this is legit a specialty. And at the end of shot clocks, at the end of quarters, probably not the fourth quarter, but at the end of quarters, not the fourth, Peyton Pritchard gets put in the game for these situations, these half court heaves, these end, end of the quarter stuff. He does this, and he's special at it so here you got the veer screen by luke Cornette right there a fair screen is a ball screen followed by an off ball screen so right here he doesn't actually set it but this is common in veer screens where the guy just comes up here and he just goes right to the off ball screen because it makes the defender of the guy that's screening it makes the screeners defender gets caught off guard just a little bit and then being one step behind could be an advantage for your offense. So here he comes up, acts like he's gonna set the on ball, immediately goes to the off ball, wide pin down to Sam Hauser. He catches it right there, gets it back to Pritchard, and again the step back three from damn near the logo on Trey Alexander and his butter. Now I didn't want to spend too much time on Luke and Payne Pritchard because we know what those guys are about. We know what their roles are gonna be. We've seen a lot of those guys in the regular season. They are integral parts of our team but now we're on to the youngins and jordan walsh may have had his best showing in, in the nba game nine points four assists four rebounds and three blocks for jordan walsh he sold a lot of passing in this game he was initiating actions getting guys all those wide pin downs in the in the correct pocket in the correct space for them to either catch and shoot for them to either curl off and go to the rim and make plays for others he did a lot of things in this game the defense was good and he finally got that shot going towards the end so here he catches it again and it's just the patience that he was playing within this game the summer league he struggled it looked like he was just going too fast him not hitting shots really impacted him he started to hang his head and all that shit. but here just being patient the drive right here and even after this guy falls he didn't rush to bum rush to the paint he slowed down took the dribble forced Dario Sarge to come to him and the nice drop off for Luke Cornette. And then after that, of course, it's Colin Carr being defense. Right after that, he backpedals, meets Russell Westbrook at the rim. This is still one of the fastest guys in the league. He comes back, look how he flips his hips. He's backpedaling, backpedaling, kind of silent, and then he flips his hips once he sees that Russell Westbrook is going directly to the rim, flips his hips, does a nice job of staying on balance, puts his hands up. You know, he is a guy that does struggle with fouls. I will say that some of them are ticky tack. He's a well, this is his second year now, but especially in his rookie season, he will play great defense. He will be physical, but he's just a rookie. He's an unknown rookie for real, and he's not going to get a lot of the calls from the referees. But here he does a nice job keeping his hands up and forces a tough shot by Westbrook. All right, so here we got another play. It looks like on the right side, we're going to get some stagger twirl action with Jaden Springer twirling this. And then we we're going to get two stagger screens from him and Luke Cornette for Sam Hauser to come off for a three. But then on this side, we got Peyton Pritchard driving and kicking to Jordan Walsh. He shoots the three and misses, but contrast this from Summer League. Again, I told you guys in the Summer League, he didn't shoot well. Had a hell of a last game, but all the games before that, you know, he was visibly upset with him not hitting shots. If you're somebody that's not in a Celtics regular rotation already, you will have one of the hardest jobs in the NBA trying to crack a defending champion team's rotation that brung back every guy except O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea, your champion brother, the contributions is much appreciated. If you're a guy trying to crack his rotation, especially a young guy like Walsh, Shaman, right? They have to do the little things. And it starts with competing and playing defense. You miss a shot, you don't hang your head down. Watch Jordan Walsh. He misses the shot, sees that somebody's running and he haul asses, jumps, deflects a pass, it's still not enough, make a second effort, and he blocks a shot. Three blocks in this game for Jordan Walsh. A guy that's not in the, that's not already in the rotation isn't gonna mesmerize Joe Mazzula with his scoring. They have to also be able to do the little things and hustle for them to get on the court. Jordan Walsh showed that he wanted to play in tonight's game. And the defense was on full display tonight. Jordan Walsh right here on the drive by Dario Sars ties him up and forces the jump ball. And here, as I said in the first clip, we got a lot of uh, reps of Jordan Walsh initiating offense and as a passer. And to see him handle those with such poise and ease was a welcome sight. So here he's bringing the ball up. He's going to enter it into Payne Pritchard. Him and Luke Cornett are going to set stagger screens for Sam Hauser to come off. Stagger screens are two identical screens set with space apart from them. So they're setting the same as that screen. Walsh kind of goes, kind of jumps. Could have been kind of dangerous here. Could have been called offensive. But 
um you see two of the same screens just with some space apart they both jump a little bit just to try to hit the guy chasing i think that's julian strother right there chasing sam hauser they get it to hauser jordan walsh gets the ball again and a quick pass again to luke Burnett, and they have to foul all right so here we got Payne pritchard attacking the defense going to the rim collapsing the defense trying to find an open man jordan walsh here got a two-on-one with him and sam hauser good job by julian strother knowing the sky report you stunt at jordan walsh and you want to prioritize checking sam hauser jordan walsh is not a proven shooter yet in his league sam hauser is so good job on him but jordan walsh him doing a good job of now hesitating a little bit not knowing if straw is going to come to him still keep his composure and hitting the wing three and when i tell you the activity and the tracking ability when his man does not have the ball of jordan walsh was amazing in this game so here he's on the ball to start they entered into DeAndre Jordan. The off-ball screen is set by Jalen Pickett. Does a nice job of getting Walsh off of Concar just a little bit, but he knows this pass is coming. So he uses that long, lanky wingspan. Just barely misses the ball, but he's able to get back in front of Concar and stonewall them. And his defense springs the Celtics offense. When the Celtics play defense, we saw this all last year. When the Celtics seriously play defense, everything is easy. They get the, the trailer three from Peyton Pritchard. Nice pass from Sam Hauser. He knocks another one down. Now the Nuggets end up scoring on this possession, but again, the activity and the intensity Jordan Wall showed on the defensive side of the ball was such a promising sight. So he's right here, right? He's gonna notice this screen and roll. Gets up to the level, very quickly switches, right? Then they come to the other side. Jordan Walsh, again, off the ball, is ready to guard, showing that he's ready to guard, trying to get into the passing lane. He's right, look, he's jumping around, jumping around. He knows this is coming, right? So. Gets kind of chicken wrapped a little bit by the jab set by Trey Alexander. That's cool. Gets chicken wrapped, but he drives. This is what you got help defense for, team defense. But again, the tracking ability. Look how he's tracking the ball like a cornerback or a safety. The help comes, so he knows that he has to go get his teammates, man, because they helped him. Look how he's tracking the ball in the air. Look how he's tracking the ball. Turns around, finds his man, goes under the screen, forces a pickup, and here Trey Alexander. It's a tough shot to go over Jane Springer, but again, just the activity, again, help there. Just a great, great show of intensity and just defensive prowess by Jordan Walsh. All right, so we got Jordan Walsh back on the offensive side. Kind of a broken play here for the Celtics, but they get it back to Jordan Walsh at the top of the key and watch the no-look pass, seeing that we got a two-on-one with Trey Alexander, uh, with Drew Peterson and Amias Keita. He chooses to go to Drew Peterson. The no look by Jordan Walsh to Nimi, and he finishes. This was really, really impressive by Jordan Walsh. So he gets the rebound, right? Taking up the court. He's going to pass to J.D. Davis, who's the point guard in this situation. He's going to drive. He's going to kick. And watch this drive and kick by Jordan Walsh. Right there. Again, just the patience he's playing with. That's the second time he has had a semi to open three that he declined. It's driving and kicking, right? It's driving and kicking. Joe Mazzula, this offense is a drive and kick factor everybody talks about the number of threes the Celtics shoot it's not the number it's how they get them if you're getting all your threes or majority of your threes on driving kicks with a defense in rotation and you're forcing them to move and you're getting open threes off of that i don't care how many you take you can take 100 threes if they are processed the right way that's all that i care about and i'm sure that's all that joe Missoula care about so him declining this semi-open three to drive and it looks like he was gonna pass to cater right here and he pump fakes using those young legs <laughs> pumps jumps spins around all in one motion that was jd davidson and he hits a three all right so here we got jordan walsh again as a passer is gonna tell Cater to set the wide pin down for drew peterson he's gonna come off and again right in the shooting pocket for drew peterson to go right to the hoop Great pass by Jordan Walsh, puts it in the pocket. Drew Peterson fakes high right there, the two steps, uses his body, puts his body right into Julian Strother's uh, chest area and finishes with the scoop play. All right, so here we got some good defense by the Celtics as a collective. Uh, we got Bayless Chime, who struggled today. I expect him to be much better when he gets more time, when the starters aren't playing. But look at Jordan Walsh showing athleticism, trailing the play, just making sure nothing goes wrong, running down. He finds the ball and he spikes it. 
All right, so this was a really good play to me, and it just showed how much variety, how many options the Celtics offense has, and it's just predicating on them not being robots and taking what the defense gives them. So here, as we've seen earlier in this game, the Celtics are going to set up the stagger screens for the shooter. Shaman's goal is to come up here to the top of the key, but the defender, uh, I think this is Jameer Young, he's going to shoot right there and go and try to get in between this passing lane. Celtics immediately see that. They immediately read this, and something that Shaman did well in college was was off ball movement and reading what the defender was doing so if they cheat up or they shoot the gap he comes back and he fades so now as they, they see him shoot this passing lane it immediately turns into a flare screen right there so it could well it didn't really turn into it but it set it up like they were going to set the flare screen which they could have and it would have been open okay the calls for the ball turns to a dribble handoff jordan walsh gets set the jumper looked really good towards the end of the game that's a deep three in the Kansas. And next we have Drew Peterson, who had 10 points and three rebounds in this game, is a good all-around offensive player. He's a guy that's not elite at one thing. He's a good shooter. He's a good handler. He's a good passer. He's like a jack of all trades guy when his game is flowing, especially on the offensive side of the ball. The Celtics keep trying to turn him into Sam Hauser, him coming off off, off uh, stagger screens and him doing the Spain PNRs. They're trying to turn him into a Sam Hauser clone when he's a guy that has more passing chops and more handling chops than Sam Hauser. I believe in the G League, he has had like near triple doubles in a lot of games. He might have some, but I think he averaged about five or six assists in the G League. And here, it shows right here. So we got Kata doing the uh, screen and roll with him. And look how fast he processes this, right? Comes off, immediately sees it, and just fires a pass to J.D. Davidson in the corner. He just misses. All right, so earlier we see him get a nice tough bucket on the Jordan Walsh pass when he curled off that screen. Here at the end of the shot clock, we got five seconds. He has to make a play happen. Right now, it's just him. He needs to get a bucket. He does a nice move between the get back and the drive. Takes his two steps, uses his body to get a little bit of space in the right-hand runner. All right, so here we got another PNR rep from Drew Peterson, the screen by Dimitro, and he's gonna find Anton Watts with another rocket pass to the corner. You've seen the first one. That, look, look how on target that shit is. Right to, <laughs> right to the side of his face. But unfortunately, Anton Watts was out of bounds and he still missed anyway. Now, I do feel like the number of clips I have for Drew Peterson is not an indication of how good he played. Again, he only played in the fourth quarter, so he's not going to get hella opportunities to get like, you know, 10 clips. But Drew Peterson was very poised in this game. In some league, he struggled in a couple of games, but in the games that he was good in, again, he does a lot of everything where he's playmaking and he's hitting threes. Here, just showing the pace again, a good pass by Anton Watson. He's open. He knows the defender's going to sell out to try to contest the shot, especially in a close game where three really hurt them. The patience, the flyby. Now, I wasn't originally going to do this, but these were just too big of plays, especially in the clutch of these games. J.D. Davidson has seven points, two rebounds, two steals, and one block in this game. And his defense, something that he's not really known for, really came up clutch in this game. And it helped the Celtics get this win. So here, we got him, like, lurking the pass. And look how quick he is. Look how quick. Bam. Right there. And he just gets right into the passing lanes. And then he's going to get it off to Lonnie Walker, who passes it to Drew Peterson. Another clip that could have been for Drew Peterson, but I thought th th this play was ultimately made by J.D. Davidson. But he comes down, he's another clutch three. And this may have been the biggest play of this game. J.D. Davidson, a guy that if you've seen him in high school, you know his calling card, his elite trait is athleticism. Boom. This, say, this hey, he shoots the three, he misses, right? That's not his calling card, even though in the G League he seems to shoot a lot better than in any other period of his career. But he shoots it in the corner. It's just lining this up. All <laughs> Trey Alexander has no idea. He's just lining this up, getting his steps right, slows down. They explode. <clears throat> Blocks that right, and he comes down. And something that is tearing in, in as an elite trait for J.D. Davidson is throwing lobs. J.D. Davidson is exceptional. Is an exceptional lob thrower. And he does it with so much poise and awareness for the defender and to where his offensive player is. This is just his offhand and offhand scoop up makes it look so easy up to Dimitro for the slam. But that is the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe, and share to any and everyone that you can. Just get out there a little bit more. And I will see you guys in the next video. But this is Nick. Peace.